Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Ross. In this video, I review treatment options for Bartonella infection. I break the treatments down into three different treatment tiers. These treatments involve both prescription options as well as herbal options. After you're done watching the video, click on the link in the video description for the written article I have, which gives you specific doses on the herbs as well as the prescriptions. Treat Lime is supported by purchases you make through Marty Ross MD Supplements. I tried uh, Bactrim and broke out in a mild high blood rash eight hours later. Tried Rifampin and was too nauseous with headache to handle it. So are there any tier one antibiotic treatments for Bartonella that I could use? It seems either Bactrim or Rifampin are lead antibiotics and either needs to be paired with another one for successful treatment. Is this so or is there not any combination that may work that doesn't involve Bactrim or Rifampin? I did seem to tolerate azithromycin pretty well. Okay, the strongest regimens are all in tier one. They tend to work about 80 to 85% of the time. Tier two regimens work about 75 to 80% of the time. And tier three is about 70 to 75% of the time, all right? In tier one, the lead there's always two antibiotics that are used. Tier one it involves coupling Bactrim with something or Rifampin with something or a group of medicines called the, uh, quinol the fluoroquinolones, which is something called Leviquin or ciprofloxacin. And those, that, that, those are in tier one as well, too. Now, you could do a tier one involving Leviquin or Cipro and combine those with a tetracycline, like a minocycline or a doxycycline, okay? That would be an effective tier one treatment. However, however, I, I tended... In my practice, when I was still practicing in Seattle, Washington, many of you know I'm not practicing now. I'm, I'm in Austin, Texas, where I'm not licensed to practice. But um, when I was practicing, I towards the, uh, the last few years, I stopped using the Leviquin and Cipro as much. Although they are effective, they are very effective. I tended to save them more as a later resort. And the reason is uh, Leviquin especially has uh, increased chance of causing tendon inflammation that won't go away. It just stays on even after you use the, the medicine, okay? And, and also, it can sometimes cause tendon rupture, breakage of the tendons as well, too. Now, this happens maybe 1% or less of the time, if you look at what the research says. But there's enough of a risk of it that I started not using the medicine as much, okay? So what I would do in a situation like this, if I had a patient that um, had allergic reaction to Bactrim and had side effects on Rifampin, I might look to Tier 2. Okay, and tier two, again, works about 75 to 80% of the time. And within, if you're on a Bartonella treatment, if it is working within a month or two, you should start seeing improvement in your Bartonella symptoms, okay? If you're not seeing improvement in those Bartonella symptoms, then it's time to try something else, all right? But a tier two treatment would be to combine a macrolide, which is Zithromax, which is one of the medicines you said you can use, the azithromycin is Zithromax, okay? Or biaxin. Biaxin is also a macrolide. It's also known as clarithromycin, all right? So you use either clarithromycin or biaxin, and you combine it with a tetracycline, which is doxycycline or minocycline, all right? And I detail how to do that in my article, and I'll show you that article here in a minute. That's probably where I would wind up going next. And as, if, if I were treating somebody that had this kind of problem, that is what I would wind up doing, okay? Anyhow, um, in terms of my uh, ideas about how do you treat Bartonella, take a look at the online Lyme guide and look under infection treatment plans. And click on my article called Kills Bartonella. And you'll see that's where I outline the, the various tiers of a treatment, okay? All right, then if you're trying to figure out if your Bartonella is getting better, you need to compare it against Bartonella symptoms. All right, so in terms of Bartonella symptoms, I would take a look at this section called How to Diagnose. And there is an article I have here called It Could Be Bartonella or Babesia, The Symptoms and Signs, okay? And you could read through this, and it tells you what are the symptoms that suggest Bartonella and what are the symptoms that suggest Babesia, all right? Um, as many of you know from following my webinars, I am not a big believer in, um, in uh, using the testing necessarily to diagnose Babesia or Bartonella 
because we have too many strains of each of those germs and the testing can only find a limited number, okay? So I tended, when I was practicing, to make my Bartonella and Babesia diagnosis based on uh, what the symptoms told me. And also I would follow those symptoms to see are they starting to get better, okay, by one to two months. Keep in mind, Bartonella treatment is going to take about four to six months in Lyme disease to totally resolve, okay? But you can start seeing improvement in some of those Bartonella symptoms by around one to two months if the treatment's working. All right? All right. Good luck to you, Megan. Thank you for that question.